wave on that stretched string. If a wave is to travel through a medium such as water, air, steel, or a stretched string, it must cause the particles of that medium to oscillate as it passes. For that to happen, the medium must possess both inertia so that kinetic energy can be stored and elasticity so that but potential energy can be stored. These two properties determine how fast the wave can travel in the media. And conversely, it should be possible to calculate the speed of the wave through the medium in terms of these properties. We can send a wave pulse down this rubber tube by jerking sharply on the free end. Notice the propagation speed of the wave. If we increase the tension of the rubber tubing by stretching it, how will the wave speed be affected? The wave speed increases. Further increasing the tension will even further increase the speed of the wave. V equal square root tau over mu. This is a, we have been improved. Okay, the speed of a wave along a stretched ideal string depends only on the characteristics of the string tau and mu, and not on the frequency of the wave f, which is fixed entirely by whatever generates the wave. The wavelength of the wave along the string is fixed by lambda equals v over f. The f is decided by the source, v decided by the media, and then we get the lambda. Wave speed v on the stretch string. Derivation from Newton's second law. An ideal string, one, there are no free clock forces to cause the, the wave to die out as it travels along. Two, the string is so long that we do not have to concern about any echoes that might rebound from its far end. Uh, this is a string, stretch of string, okay. Single symmetrical pulse, when I study this one. Second, a reference frame in which the pulse remains stationary. Now this pause okay, is from left to right. And the reference is is a, remains stationary. That means we take the reference, go with it. The speed of this string, the wave is constant. So that frame is an inertial frame. Uh, they go with it. Okay. In that case, the string appears to move passes from right to left with speed v. So if we're standing in the reference frame, we look at the pass, this pass is looks like from from right to left because the we go with the pass really together from left to right. Linear density mu equal to m over L for the string at a tension torque. Now let's see that's what we look at this section of this one, of the string. Uh, it is part of this circle because this, the ring is goes up and down, okay, right? So actually this one is move forward, but it's, you have the circular motion. So vertically, how much force actually on it? It has two tension from the rope, the string, okay? One on the right side, one on the left side. So the vertical force, look at this, uh, this is the vertical, we div dissolve this force into two, horizontal and vertical, and that vertical equal to tau sine this angle, and this angle is this angle, theta, okay, this perpendicular, this 
this pimpinum, this is smaller. And the whole this is two theta. Okay? Ah. So we see this one, this vertical is tall sine theta. And on this side, they also have a tall sine theta. So the vertically have to get two tall sine theta. And when we take this theta is very small, sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So F equal to two tall theta. And we move two inside, tall outside. Two theta, two theta is this angle. This angle from, from the uh, calculus, okay, uh, trigonometer, this angle equal to the arc delta L over radius R. This delta L of R is two theta. The mass of this one is equal to mu times the delta L. Okay? And then we see the acceleration because it goes to circular motion. So you have V squared over R. Now, let's write it down for the Newton's second law. F equal to MA. F equal to tau delta L over R. Okay? M equal to delta and the mu delta L. A is V equal to three. This is F equal to MA. We cancel out the delta L, cancel out the R, we get the, we get a V. This is V square equal to tau on the mu. V equal to square root tau on the mu. It's very simple, okay? Sample. In the figure, two strings have been tied together with a knot and then stretched between two rigid support. The strings have the linear density mu1 equal to 1.4 times 10 to the minus 4 kilogram per meter and mu2 equal to 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 kilogram per meter. The lengths are L1 3.0 meter, L2 2.0 meter. And string 1 is under tension 400 newton. Simultaneously, on each string, a pass is sent from the rigid support end. Now, this one, or this go, this one, okay, this go, okay. Towards the nut. Which pause reach the nut first? Which one get this first? Ah, that one is, we want to calculate the time t. The less t is the first one, okay? Now, so t is r over v. v is equal to square root uh, tau over mu. In the denominator, so we invert it one. We put the number inside. It's very simple, okay? You get the answer for t1. Also, we get a T2. T2 is to L2 minus V2. Uh, v, the tension will be the same. Uh, tension will be the same. Okay? So we put number inside. We get the time to 1.62 times 10 to the minus millisecond. This one is shorter. So the pulse on the string 2 reached the nut first. energy and the power of a weight traveling along a string. When we set up a wave on a stretch string, we provide enough energy for the motion of the string. As the wave moves away from us, it transports that energy as both kinetic energy and elastic potential energy. Let's consider each form in turn. Now, this is a wave. The particle, the string of string, move up and down along the y direction, and the wave propagates from along the x direction. We see the kinetic energy of a section dx. We know when you up and down, they go to the sine cosine. Okay, okay. So an element of the string, a mass dm, okay, length dx, oscillating transversely and simple harmonic motion as the wave passes through it. And it has kinetic energy associated with this U. U is dy dt, okay? Not dx dt, r, d u d t. The particle moves, okay? So it has kinetic energy, half dm u squared, okay? 
and we know that at the balance point, the V is the maximum, right? Yeah. When the element is rushing slow, it's, it's Y equal to zero position. It's transverse velocity, and thus its kinetic energy is the maximum. When the element is at its extreme position, Y equal to Y maximum, it transverse velocity, and thus again, its kinetic energy is zero. So, we know that's a kinetic at top zero in middle maximum. Elastic potential energy. To send a sinusoidal wave along the previously straight string, the wind must necessarily stretch the string. At a string, elements of length dx oscillates transversely. Its length must increase and decrease in a period way. If the string element is fit as a sinusoid wave for now, when it goes up in sound, the length just moves. Okay. Elastic potential energy is associated with this length change. Okay. We look at this one. Okay. We look at this one. Okay. Which one, which part changes more than dx? This already parallel to this x. It does not change at all, almost. And this one has a largest change. The oscillating string element thus has both its maximum kinetic energy and its maximum elastic post energy at y equal to zero. And this one is extended more, more potential energy and move fast, more kinetic energy. And in the snap dot, of the figure, the region of the string at the maximum displacement, this one, has no energy. Why? Its velocity is zero, and it almost dx, no extension. So, and the region at zero displacement has the maximum energy. This one, maximum velocity, maximum in, in, in change in, in length, okay? All right. Oh, Someone would ask you, hey, we used to learn, you have a maximum kinetic energy, you have a minimum uh, potential energy. You have a minimum kinetic energy, you have maximum potential energy. They're just vice versa. Now, that's the single point. It's not the situation, the wave. Because the wave, we have, we have to analyze at the same time many, many sections. One section, you have maximum potential, maximum energy kinetic energy and another se section they have minimum kinetic energy minimum potential energy so it, it can be do that way because the subject is different okay energy transport as the wave travels along the string forces due to the tension in the string continuously do work to transfer energy from regions with energy to regions with no energy. As the wind moves into the section that were previous address, energy is transferred into those new sections. Thus we say that the wind transport energy along the string. We might send a wave along the string by continuously oscillating one end of the string in perpendicular direction, providing energy for motion and stretching of the string. 